Hi guys and welcome back to the series. In this video we'll be doing equations and inequalities. So, right. Recall, remember when we used to get um, an equation that looks like this. So i squared minus j squared, and we knew that we had to do a difference of two squared, two squares, sorry, and it would be i minus j times i plus j. What happens if we get an equation that looks like this? x squared minus 4x minus 3x. And when you try and use the same logic, this is what happens. x plus 1, x minus 1, still does when you multiply it out, it doesn't give you that. x minus 3, x plus 1. You multiply it, still doesn't give you that. It still doesn't give you x squared minus 4, x minus 3. So, what do you do? Okay. In this case, you have to complete the square. In order to complete the square, we need the equation to be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. We need the coefficient of x squared to be 1. And we need to take half of the coefficient of x, square it, and then sub add and subtract it to the equation. So basically, here, we, we basically adding 0. Because you add the same thing that you subtract to the equation, and that's 0. So for instance, if you say plus 1 minus 1, that's adding 0. You solve the equation as a difference of two squares, and then you solve for x. So that's how you complete the square. Let's do it in an example. So x squared minus 4x minus 3. Condition 1 is met. It's in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? Condition 1 is met. Condition 2, the coefficient of x squared must be 1, and it is. And condition 3, now, okay, now we must start. Now we must take this, we must take the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x, and we must half it, and then we square it. We add and subtract what we get. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. It's x squared minus 4x. The coefficient of x is 4. They said we have 4. Half of 4 is 2, right? So we add 2, and they said we square it, squared, and then we minus 2, squared. That is 0, right? But it's going to help us. So minus 3 is equal to 0. Then, what do we do now? Do you see that this, we can complete the square with this? So, we complete the square. Okay, so, yes, we complete the square. Now, we have x minus 2 squared. And then, we have this remainder. This is minus 4. This is not minus 2. It's minus 4 minus 3 and that's minus 7 is equal to 0. Right. Now, we have a difference of two squares. This, we can make, a, a, it's, it's not a perfect square, but we can make it. <laughs> right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say x minus 2 plus the square root of 7. Do you agree that the, if we square the square root of 7, we get 7? And if we square x, x minus 2, we get that. So do you agree that these are both perfect squares? And we say x minus 2 minus. Right. Then we say x minus 2 plus square root of 7 is equal to 0. Or x minus 2 minus the square root of 7 is equal to 0. Now we solve for x. x minus 2 is equal to negative root 7. x is equal to negative root 7 plus 2. That's 
the x, the first x, or x minus 2 is equal to square root of 7, we just took the 7 over, I mean the root 7 over, and then we get x is equal to the square root of 7 plus 2. And there you have your answer. Let's try another example. Example 2. Is this in the form that it's supposed to be in? Yes, it is. Is the coefficient of x squared 1? No, it's not. What must we do? We divide by 2 all over. Then we get x squared minus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, can we start? Yes, we can. Right. Then we get x squared minus 5x plus half of 5 is 5 over 2 squared, have to square it, minus 5 over 2 squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Then we can complete this square, x minus 5 over 2 squared minus then we minus this whole thing, you punch it into your calculator, negative 5 over 2 squared minus 4 is negative 41 over 4, which is equal to 0. Then what we can do is the difference of two squares x minus 5 over 2 minus the square root of 41 over 4 x minus 5 over 2 plus the square root of 41 over 4 we're not done yet we have to solve for x x minus 5 over 2 is equal to can I go straight to that 41 over 4 x is equal to the square root of 41 over 4 plus 5 over 2 or x minus 5 over 2 plus root 41 over 4 is equal to 0 so we get x minus 5 over 2 is equal to negative square root of 41 over 4. x is equal to negative the square root of 41 over 4 plus, when we take this over, it turns into a plus 5 over 2. And Bob's your uncle. We're done. Okay. Example 3. Okay. This is 3 times 10y plus 3y squared is equal to 6. So we multiply the 3 in. 30y plus 3y squared is equal to 6. We bring the 6 over so that it can be in the form that we want it to be in. Plus 3y squared minus 6 is equal to 0. Now we have it in the form that we want it to be in. Actually, 3y squared plus 30y minus 6 is equal to 0. But is the coefficient, is this coefficient of y squared 1? No, it's not. So we have to divide again. So it's y squared plus 10y minus 2. We, we divide it by 3. Divide it by 3. Right? Then now, okay, this is what we have. And now we can start with completing our square. So it's y squared plus 10y. We have to half 10. Half of 10 is 5 squared minus 5 squared minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can complete this. And we say y plus 5 squared minus 25 minus 25 minus 2 is minus 27 
is equal to zero. That we can solve by a difference of two squares. So we say y plus five squared minus square root of 27 times y plus five squared plus square root of 27. Then we say y plus five Oh no, sorry, no squares. Y plus five minus square root of 27. Y plus five plus the square root of 27, right? Then we say Y plus five minus square root of 27 is equal to zero or Y plus five plus the square root of 27 is equal to zero. Use brackets, they're your friends. So, y plus five is equal to square root of 27. Y is equal to square root of 27 minus five. Or, y plus five is equal to minus square root of 27. And y will be equal to minus square root of 27 minus five. And there you go. Right. So let's move on to our quadratic formula. Sometimes doing this is too long. Completing the square becomes long and tedious and the numbers just get all over the place. So someone sat down and they thought of a formula. And now we have the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is this. This is the quadratic formula. All you need is for your, for your equation to be in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And then you can use the quadratic formula to say x is equal to this whole thing, minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And it gives you two roots or one, whatever. It, gives, it gets you straight to the x without you having to, you know, go through all that hassle. So, yeah. Example one. First, we have to identify our a, our a, b, c. So we want our equation to be in this form. And then we also want to identify which is a, which is b, which is c, so that we can plug it in our formula over here. Okay, so over here, we have the equation a squared minus 6a plus 2 is equal to 0. a, coefficient of a is 1. Coefficient of b is negative 6. And the coefficient of c is 2. Then we're going to plug it all into our formula. So x is equal to minus b. Minus b plus the square root of b, we said it was minus 6 squared minus 4, times 1, times 2, all over 2 times 1 is equal to, which is equal to 3 plus square root of 7. So x is equal to 3 plus the square root of 7, or x is equal to minus b minus square root of minus b squared minus 4 times a, 1, c, 2, all over 2 times a, which is 1. You plug that all in your calculator, and you should get that it is 3 minus the square root of 7. That's it. Example 2. Again, we identify A, B, and C. A is equal to 5. B is equal to 2. And C is equal to minus 10. And then we plug our 
our numbers into the formula. So minus b minus 2 plus the square root of b is 2, so it's 2 squared minus 4 times 5 times minus 10. All over 2 times 5 is equal to plug it all in your calculator and you should and you should get minus 1 plus the square root of 51 over 5 and that you can express as a decimal and that is what it is and the second root x is equal to minus 2 minus square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 5 times minus 10 all over 2 times 5 and that is equal to minus 1 plus square root of 51 over 5 and as a decimal it's negative one comma six two eight two. Right. So there, we're done. Now we're gonna go on to substitution. When you see an equation like this, you tend to panic and you don't know what to do with yourself because it seems like it's a lot. It's t plus one squared plus three times t plus one plus two. Well, can you see that t plus one is a common factor in this equation. So can we not use something else that we used to in order to solve this equation and to make it look simpler to us? Of course we can. What if I said, let k equal t plus 1. And then we substitute k every time we see t plus 1. So we have this k squared plus 3k plus 2 is equal to 0. Now it looks like the normal equations that we solve all the time. So we have k and another k and 2, 1 plus plus is equal to 0. k is equal to minus 2 or k is equal to minus 1. But we're not done. Remember, we substituted. So we have to calculate, right? We have to calculate what the true value of, of t is. So for k is equal to minus 2, we have this. We said k was equal to t plus 1, but here we're saying k is equal to minus 2. So we equate them. So t plus 1 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, t is equal to minus 3. And then for k equals to minus 1, we have t plus 1 is equal to minus 1. Take that over. t is equal to minus 2. And that is your solution. Let's do the next one. Now you're freaking out because it's s squared minus 7 minus 6 over s squared minus 7 is equal to minus 5. Well, let's just make this into the form that we used to. s squared minus 7 minus 6 over s squared minus 7 minus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, now let's multiply everything out. Now we have s squared minus 7 squared minus 6 minus 5 times s squared minus 7, which is equal to 0. But then again, we have s squared minus 7 as a common factor everywhere. Well, as a, yes, a common factor everywhere. So we can let k equal s squared minus 7. And if we do that, we get k squared minus 6 minus 5 times k is equal to 0. 
k squared minus 5k minus 6 is equal to 0. We solve for k. Do you agree? And then k is equal to 6 or k is equal to minus 1. But we're not done. We have to go back to what we said k was. We let k equal s squared minus 7. So for k equals 6, we have s squared minus 7 is equal to 6. s squared is equal to, we take the 7 over, 6 plus 7 is 13. And therefore s is equal to square root of 13 plus minus and for k is equal to minus 1 we have s squared minus 7 is equal to minus 1 s squared is equal to take that minus over equal to 6 right and if we square root both sides we get s is equal to the square root of 6 plus minus so therefore s is equal to negative root 13 root 13 root 6 and negative root 6 that's that now the last one for this video is finding the equation so basically here we're working backwards at first we had the equation and we had to find the roots and now they're giving us the roots and we have to find the equation so here it says find the equation with the roots minus 2 and 2 x is equal to minus 2 or x is equal to 2 you know how that went you plugged it in so you when when you when you got this when you got this you went to this right so you just reverse your thinking and that's what we get right then you multiply everything out you foil everything out and that's the answer x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 4 and that's the final answer x squared minus 4 is equal to 0 so let's do one together it says find the equation with roots 6 and minus 4 so we said x is equal to 6 or x is equal to minus 4. And when we said this, we really meant it was like this. x minus 6, right? And this was like this. x plus 4, right? Was equal to 0. Now we're going to multiply everything out. x squared plus 4x minus 6x minus 24 is equal to 0 and then it's x squared minus 2x minus 24 and there's your answer let's do another example it says the quadratic formula f of t has two roots t is equal to 4 and t is equal to negative 3 over 2 respectively find f of t so when this happened we had this t minus 4 and we had so here here okay here when we said t is equal to 4 here we went from t minus 4 is equal to 0 and here if we work backwards we said 2t is equal to 3 and we said 2t minus 3 plus 3 is equal to 0 so this is how we work this is how we did it right you do you agree with me if we went back we would say 2t is equal to minus 3 and then we'd still get this so this is what we have now. Now we have t minus 4, 2t plus 3 is equal to 0. t 
times 2t is 2t squared plus 3t minus 8t plus, oh sorry, minus, 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 minus 12 is equal to 0. So we have 2t squared minus 5t minus 12. And that is f of t. So f of t is equal to 2t squared minus 5t minus 12. There.